It's amazing the way we're familiar with phrases from foreign countries, such as Egality, Fraternity, Liberty from France, or the American unalienable right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. There's no such buzzword in Ireland. However, there should be. And that phrase should be simply the common good. Because that phrase, the common good, is repeated throughout Bunrocks and the Heron, or the Irish Constitution. Sadly, there's no clear definition as to what it is, but there is a strong indication as to what it means. The first few articles, the first five articles of Bunrocks and the Heron, or the Irish Constitution, allude to setting out geographically what the, the, the country is and what the flag is, etc. The first article getting into the meat of governance is 6.1. It states, all powers of government, legislative, executive and judicial, derive under God from the people, whose right it is to designate the rulers of the state and, in final appeal, to decide all questions of national policy according to the requirements of the common good. That's the first mention of the common good, and as I said, it's repeated many times throughout the Constitution. I'll read it again. All powers of government, legislative, executive and judicial, derive under God from the people, whose right it is, whose right it is, to designate the rulers of the state and, in final appeal, to decide all questions of national policy according to the requirements of the common good. There's a slight anomaly with that, in that it gives us a right of appeal but the Constitution doesn't set out how that appeal is supposed to happen. And in fact, the Constitution probably goes on to frustrate that right of appeal. This came to my attention recently with the recent outburst of AK-47, Alan Kelly, the Acting Minister for the Environment, when he commented that the Constitution was what was preventing the use of unoccupied houses being used to solve the housing crisis. He stated, and quite correctly, 43.1.2 of the Constitution states, the state accordingly guarantees to pass those laws attempting to abolish the right of private ownership of the general right to transfer, bequeath and inherit property. That's clear, okay, and there's nothing wrong with it. However, he didn't go on to explain that Article 43 to one states, the state recognises, however, that the exercise of the rights mentioned in the foregoing provisions of this article ought in civil society, and I do think we strive to be a civil society in Ireland, to be regulated by the principles of social justice. 43.2.2 says, the state accordingly may, as occasion requires, delimit by law the exercise of the said rights with the view to reconciling their exercise with the exigencies of the common good. So, the common good outweighs under the principles of social justice the Constitution, the right to private property. So social justice can actually mean the government can say, let's we really need this property for the common good. This property needs to be used to solve the housing crisis. So I started looking at the Constitution based on that. And this is where I came upon the anomaly I've already spoken about, the right of appeal on social justice. Article 45, the directive principles of social policy. Social policy, social justice policy. This is where the common good is directly linked to social justice, social policy. Article 45 sets out the principles of social policy. I'm going to read. The principles of social policy set forth in this article are intended for the general guidance of the Oireachtas. There's 11 statements broken into <coughs> four sections. 45.1 The state shall strive to promote the welfare of the whole people by securing and protecting as effectively as it may the social order in which justice and charity shall inform all the institutions of national life. So the people, justice, charity, national life. 
45.2. The state shall, in particular, direct its policy towards securing. And it now lists five things that it should secure. 45.2.1. That the citizens, all of whom, men, women equally, have the right to an adequate means of livelihood, may, through their occupations, find the means of making reasonable provision for their domestic needs. Simply, a reasonable standard of living. Two, that the ownership and control of the material resources of the community may be so distributed amongst private individuals and the various classes as best to subserve the common good. So there's a right for the resources to be owned by private individuals within the community. The next article, or the next item, actually puts a little contingency into that. Three, that especially the operation of free competition shall not be allowed to, to develop as to result in the concentration of the ownership or control of essential commodities in a few individuals to the common detriment. Fires a warning of a privatisation, doesn't it? That especially the operation of free competition shall not be allowed so as to develop as a result of the concentration of the ownership or control of essential commodities in a few individuals to the common detriment. Number four, that in what pertains to the control of credit, the constant and predominant, the constant and predominant aim shall be the welfare of the people as a whole. The welfare of the people as a whole. Number five, that in what pertains to the control of credit, sorry, that there may be established on the land in economic security as many families as in the circumstances shall be practical. The land shall be provided so that people can live on it. Nothing wrong with it. 45.3, two sections. The state shall favour and, where necessary, supplement private initiative and in, uh, industry and commerce. Nothing wrong with that either, especially when you look at the next clause, which conditions it. The state shall endeavour to secure that private enterprise shall be so conducted as to ensure reasonable efficiency in the production and distribution of goods, and as to protect the public against unjust exploitation. So industry can operate, but it can't exploit. The Constitution says... Aractus is supposed to prevent exploitation. 45.4. Two items. The state pledges itself to safeguard with a special care the economic interests of the weaker sections of the community and, where necessary, to contribute to the support of the infirm, the widow, the orphan and the aged. 45.4. For two, the state shall endeavour to ensure that the strength and health of workers, men and women, and the tender age of children shall not be abused, and that citizens shall not be forced by economic necessity to enter avocations unsuited to their age, sex or strength. Very noble words. I didn't read one sentence of it. At the start... The second sentence is, the application of those principles in the making of laws shall be the care of the Oroctus exclusively and shall not be consignable by any court under the provisions of this constitution. So here we have the social guidelines by which the Oroctus is supposed to operate. And if it doesn't, you can't take them to court, you just have to take it. Bit of a contradiction in terms. But we'll go on and we'll explore maybe where Article 45 has been ignored. The common good. The social principles. 45.2.4 The state shall in particular direct its policy towards securing that in what pertains to the control of credit the constant and predominant aim shall be the welfare of the people as a whole. You have to ask, what is the Civil Debt Procedures Bill? The bank bailout and the failure to burn the bondholders about. Civil Debt Procedures. 
Constitution says everybody has a right to a reasonable livelihood. <coughs> and we have social welfare to try and maintain that. But here we have a recent law passed which allows Irish water to garnish the income from social welfare so that it can be paid. It flies in the face of Article 45. Insofar as the bank bailout, oh my God. 45.2.3. The state shall in particular direct its policy towards securing that, especially the operation of free competition, shall not be allowed to develop so as to result in the concentration of ownership or control of essential commodities in a few individuals to the common detriment. So you have to ask, what has been the privatisation of Aircom, Aer Lingus, the donation of the oil and gas reserves to Shell, the establishment of Irish water with the express intent of privatising it? What has that been about? The most onerous question that must be asked is why are all these state assets being set up as public limited companies so that they can be floated? Privatisation. But anyway, that's only my theory. 45.2.1 The state shall in particular direct its policy towards securing that the citizens, all of whom, men, women equally, have the right to an adequate means of livelihood, may through their occupations find the means of making reasonable provision for the domestic need. So why has there been a pursuit of zero contract hours, zero hour contracts, agency employment, interns, unpaid, two workers working for local authorities and other government funded agencies? Why is this being allowed? Why is it in fact being encouraged? Why is keeping the live register numbers down, skewed down, more important than adhering to the Constitution? 45.2.5 The state shall in particular direct its policy towards securing that there may be established on the land in economic security as many families in the circumstances so shall be practicable. Why is there ongoing failure to maintain inland waterways and foreshores? Why is the task force charged with this not meeting for years on end and people still being flooded out of their houses and homes and farms? 45.3.2 The state shall endeavour to secure that private enterprise shall be so conducted as to ensure reasonable efficiency in the production and distribution of goods so as to protect the public against unjust exploitation. Does anyone actually consider that the Beef Tribunal or the Moriarty Tribunal or the Banking Inquiry actually did what was set out in the principle above? And why has the Moriarty Tribunal been buried under the Official Secrets Act for 30 years? What's that about? 45.4.1 The state places itself to safeguard with a special care the economic interests of the weaker sections of the community and where necessary to contribute the support to support the infirm, the widow, the orphan and the aged. Why eight years on have two successive governments and a third one failing to move on with anything failed to ratify the United Nations Charter of Rights for people with disabilities? We continue to treat people with disabilities as objects of charity rather than the citizens that the Constitution recognises them as. What is that about? Why are they failing? And why is the Constitution set up that we can't actually challenge it? 45.4.2 The state shall endeavour to ensure that the strength and health of workers, men and women, and the tender age of children shall not be abused and the citizens shall not be forced by economic necessity to enter advocations unsuited to their sex, age or strength. How in light of this noble social principle can Ireland have 1,500 homeless children and still the Oireachtas will pass a law that simplifies the process by which the banks can repossess homes? Should it's only bankruptcy. How can this be? How can the welfare of our citizens be allowed to play second fiddle in light of the Constitution? How can we change it? Article 45 says you can't hold them to write in a court of law. Yet Article 6.1 says all the powers of government, legislative, ex executive and judicial, derived under God from the people 
whose right it is to designate the rulers of the state and, in final appeal, decide all questions of national policy according to the requirements of the common good. But we can't seek appeal because that's the right of the Oireachtas. We can't challenge it in court. Ah, let's go for a referendum. Let's change it so we can take it on in court and we can get an appeal. That's all very well until you read on to Article 46.2. Every proposal for an amendment of this constitution shall be initiated in Dáil as a bill and shall upon having been passed or deemed to have passed by both houses of the Oireachtas be submitted by referendum to the decision of the people in accordance with the law for the time being in force relating to that referendum. So if you want to change the constitution that you can hold the politicians accountable, you have to get the politicians who don't like being held accountable to change it. Turkey's voting for Christmas. I reckon you have two classes of politicians. You have the fellows who know they can't be held accountable. They charge on, and you know what? They don't give a damn because they can't be held accountable. And you get smoke and mirrors. And then you have a large portion, I reckon, who are not familiar with the policies of social principle. Who don't know that the Constitution actually sets out what thought process is supposed to be put into governing the country. Indeed, you could argue that the guillotine process used prevented that. The fact that decisions are not, and everything is not debated in Dáil Éireann, prevents the Oireachtas from adhering to Article 45. Why is it that our education system teaches us all couple of fuckle and what Shakespeare wrote, but we don't know what the common good is. And we don't know what the social principles are. That would be real education. Empowering people to know how they're supposed to be governed. How the representatives are supposed to represent them. How the laws are supposed to protect the people. But we're not educated to that end. Our kids are put into academic contest. It's very sinister. How do we take this on? How do we is actually in Article 6.1. The right of the people. The right of the people to appeal is frustrated by the Constitution. But the right to elect the designated rulers of the state is there. Elect rulers who initiate a bill to change the Constitution, to empower the people, so that the people can, in fact, appeal the laws and not just get bogged down in the Constitution. The social injustice of the Civil Debt Procedures Bill. How in God's name can you challenge that? Because it needs to be challenged. Thank you.